Hi, Charlie Kosorek, Jack Bench Woodworking, and today I am on step two of uh, my slab coffee table. Uh, you know, last time I flattened this with the router sled here on my bench. And what I'm going to do for the base is I'm going to have a uh, carved base that's uh, kind of sort of like a tree trunk. We'll call it a stylized tree trunk. And texture, put some textures on it, and I wanna, gotta put a real cool finish on it. At least I hope it's gonna be cool. And so I'm gonna get started on that now. I want to use that uh, piece of plywood for a template, so the first thing I want to do is trace the uh, outline of the top onto the plywood. Okay, so there was a crack in the slab, and so I thought that I would um, I'd make the base into two pieces and make it look like the base was actually a tree trunk that was broken in half, or it split apart, and uh, I wanted to put that split kind of in the same place as the crack in the top. Okay, so the next thing I had to do was to determine the outline for the base, and so I wanted to lay that out onto the template. I uh, walked around my neighborhood and took pictures of trees to try to get an idea, okay, what does a tree really look like? And I used those as a guide. Since the base is supposed to look like a tree trunk, it will flare out from the bottom up towards the top. And so then, of course, the outline at the bottom is larger than the outline would be at the top. So I wanted to make sure that I uh, captured both of those outlines, both the bottom larger one and the upper smaller one, onto my template. And so that's what I'm doing here. The flare around the uh, edge of the base is not the same all the way around. At some points the flare is very steep and at some points the flare is very shallow. So I had to make sure I showed on my template uh, where these different uh, points were. The base is constructed with a stave construction, kind of like a barrel. And so uh, where, the, uh, where the flare went way out, I used a 1x6 for those staves. And where the flare was very short or steep, I used a 1x4 for, for those staves. And so I had to mark on the template where those different uh, sizes would be, so then I could get a count as to how many I needed. The base would require 114 staves, provided that they were all uh, 3 quarters of an inch thick. The plywood is a template for the plan view. Uh, but I also needed a template for the staves. I needed a template for the 1x4 size, and I needed a template for the 1x6. And I just used regular um, uh, copy paper to draw those templates out. So I used different color tape uh, on the template to show where the different size staves would be. The yellow tape was 1x4s, and the red tape is where I used 1x6s. I used ash for the base, and, and this project took a lot of it, so there was an awful lot of stock prep for this job. Well, I was working with one-inch material, so I, uh, I glued it up into uh, thicker stock before I cut out the uh, individual staves. There was actually an awful lot more clamping and unclamping than I'm showing here. Just, uh, this is just a sampling of it. So then I used my paper templates to mark out uh, all the pieces and where exactly I needed to cut them out from. Well, the last thing I had to do before I could start uh, cutting the pieces out of the bandsaw was to break them down on the miter saw first. And there was a lot of waste on this job. There were so many little scraps of wood, it just it got out of control. I, I couldn't even I didn't know what to do with them after a while. The first operation at the bandsaw was just to cut out the basic shape of the staves. Whenever possible, I like to pull the work through the bandsaw uh, from the back side. That way my hands are uh, out of the way and uh, it's really much safer, less chance of pushing my hand into the blade. Like I said, this base took a lot of pieces, <laughs> consequently I spent a lot of time standing at the bandsaw. So each of the major pieces on the base had to be cut at an angle in order for me to uh, get the shape that I wanted out of it. Only 50 more to go.
There were a few times I screwed a few blocks of wood to the side of this thing just so I'd have something to clamp to. And next I had to assemble the uh, second half of the base. The bottom of the base was anything but flat when I was done gluing it together, so I uh, decided to uh, flatten it out with a router jig. If you'd like to know more about how I flattened the uh, bottom of the base, uh, check out my last video on flattening the slab. Or uh, go to my website. I've got a lot of detail on my blog about uh, how I... Uh, about that router jig for flattening uh, slabs and same one I use for the base here. Okay, so this is pretty much how it looked uh, after I got done uh, assembling and flattening it. So actually, this is the final result. Uh, this is the finished base here and um, I've got, I know the video goes kind of fast. If you want to want more details on how I constructed this and how I laid it out, I've got more uh, information on the blog on my website. I go into a lot more detail there. Um, in retrospect, one thing I wanted to mention is I know I used uh, stave uh, construction on this, or uh, Cooper, I guess you'd call it. And in retrospect, um, I'm not sure that I'd do that again. I think I might go with um, uh, stack lamination. I might try that. This was a lot of work. <laughs> Um, so anyway, in my next video, I'm going to show how I did the sculpting and texturing on this. And in a subsequent video, I will show how I got the metallic finish. So uh, if you want to know when those videos come out, please subscribe. If you like this video, for sure hit the thumbs up button. It actually does help me a lot, and I appreciate it. Thanks for watching.